guys, I'm Johan. And I'm Sean. Today we're here on this exceptionally cold day at the Ontario Regiment Museum to talk about this, the M24 Chaffee. Right, so the Chaffee was designed as a replacement for the M3 and M5 Stuart tanks. It was designed uh, during the Second World War and brought into service in limited numbers just in the closing phases of the war. It served mainly in a raiding by fire and reconnaissance role, and it did well for it, but it couldn't come up against the most German vehicles of, uh, of similar type. Okay, so now here we are on the front of the vehicle. First of all, we can notice that, like many World War II tanks, the M24 Chaffee has a front bow machine gun. As well, we've got lights just like any other vehicle, modern or old. We've also got two tow attachment points, and we can see the side of the turret. One of the things to note is the hatch on the loader side of the turret, which would allow the loader to throw empty shell casings out of the turret and generally clear it out. Right, now if you'll follow me onto the side of the vehicle. Right, so now we're at the side of the vehicle the front of the M24's turret, especially the thicker mantle armor at the front, and the 75mm rifled gun, which was an improvement over the Stuart's M uh, 37mm gun. As well, what's prevalent on the side are these mounting points. So, on this side we've got a steel cable for towing other vehicles and whatnot, and on the other side we would see tools such as axes that the crew of the vehicle might need to get out of whatever situations they run into. Also, we've got these side skirts and five road wheels down here. The road wheels themselves are connected to a torsion bar suspension system which give the M24 far better mobility than its predecessors, the M3 and M5 Stewart light tanks. In fact, the M24 has a maximum road speed of 58 km per hour. Now let's continue on to the back. Okay, so now we're at the back of the vehicle. Most obvious is the uh, engine bay, the exposed engine bay to my left, but we'll talk a little bit about that later. On the top, we can see over here is the vent for the gas tanks, and over there is the cover for the fuel filler cap. Now, down here at the bottom, we've got two attachment hook, uh, two attachment points, one on each side, and the the uh, a tow hook right here so this tank is able to be towed away by other vehicles if it breaks down or is disabled in combat and it can tow other vehicles as well or things such as artillery guns and whatnot. Now let's go back to the front, climb on top of the tank and get a better look at the engine bay. Okay so let's climb up on top of the tank. To climb up you've got a foot step over here. So put your foot there, grab hold of the handles and then simply just climb up like you would any other vehicle. Sean is already up at the top of the vehicle. Now let's go take a look at the engine bay. Okay, so now we've got the engine exposed, so let's take a closer look. In powering the Chaffee, we've got two Cadillac V8 engines, uh, both of which combined provide 220 horsepower. Also of note is that these two engines are hooked up to the GM Hydromatic Automatic Transmission System, which was the first mass-reduced automatic transmission system in the world. Now, each engine powers its own generator through a belt, and they both have their own individual radiators farther back. Each engine has an automatic choke system controlled by the temperature of the engine, and under these two red caps, we've got the dipsticks for the engine oil and the transmission fluid. And then if you look all the way back here, underneath the engine cover, we've got the radiators. So under this cover, we can access the coolant tank. Now, let's talk about the turret and the inside of the vehicle. So here we are at the top of the tank. The Chaffee had a three-man turret crew, the gunner, the loader, and the commander, and uh, was a very, very much of a hunter-killer design. 
On the, on the top of the turret, we've got interesting points, including the position for the gunner's periscope, a searchlight controlled by the commander, a mount for a 50 caliber machine gun, an antenna mount, a storage bin on the back of the turret, and something very interesting. This cupola here, so I'll pass you off to Johan to talk about it. Right. So from an en engineering perspective, this cupola is particularly interesting because it's a good example of a roller bear of what roller bearings are. The top of this cupola can actually rotate 360 degrees. So when the commander is using his periscope, which would have been mounted here, he'd be able to have a 360 degree field of view by simply rotating the entire top of the cupola. The reason why this is possible is because it's mounted on roller bearings, which you can see exposed. Now I guess we better climb inside and check out the turret. Okay, I'll climb into the gunner's position first, so to do that I'll need to use the commander's hatch. And I'll follow him sitting right down in the commander's position. Now, to our right is the loader's seat. Now, why don't you all come down and join us? So here we are inside the turret of the Chaffee. As you can see, it's a three-man turret, the gunner, the loader, and the commander, which is a major improvement over the Stuart tanks, which only had two men in, it, in them, that being the, uh, the loader and the commander, who also served as the gunner. This improvement allows the commander to pay uh, far more attention to the surroundings and situation and to uh, focus on commanding the vehicle. Now, around us, we've got space for all kinds of equipment, uh, including a mount for the M3 grease gun, which was uh, issued to vehicle crews even in the Abrams up till Desert Storm. Here we've got the intercom and the radio, and uh, we've also got controls for the spotlight mentioned above. Now, I'll pass you off to Johan to talk about the gunner's position. Right, you guys probably can't see me very well, so let me elevate this gun to get the breach out of my face. This vehicle turret, even though it's larger than the Stewart's, is still incredibly cramped, so Sean, I'm going to need you to stand up before I can lower the gun. The crew commander's seat is able to fold up, for just for this reason. So now let's lower the gun, or elevate the gun and lower the breech. Right then, now you can probably see me better. I'm in, the, uh, I'm in the vehicle gunner position, so in front of me we've got the gunner periscope which we talked about earlier, and to my right we've got the main star of the turret, the 75mm gun. This particular gun is demilitarized, so it's missing major parts such as the breech block on the back, but we can still see the barrel, and we can see a bit of the recoil mechanism here, which would have dampened the shock of the gun recoiling backwards. Also important features are these two metal bars on both sides of the gun. These bars would protect the loader, gunner, and commander from accidentally leaning into the, into the path of the gun as it recoiled backwards. Now, to control the gun, I've got two methods. Over here I've got this handle which is the trigger for the gun, and if I turn it left while the vehicle is on, or turn it right, I can traverse the turret left or right up to 360 degrees of rotation with the powered hydraulic traverse. Of course, right now we don't have power, so I can use the backup system, which is the manual traverse over here. Simply press down on the detent, and then turn left to rotate the turret to the left, and right to turn the turret to the right. Left. In terms of elevation, I've got this wheel down here, 
which will let me rotate the gun or elevate the gun if I turn it backwards and depress the gun if I turn it forwards. In front of the gunner are the mountings for the main gun sights. Unfortunately, this particular chaffee doesn't have the sights mounted. Now let's move on to the driver's position. Right guys, so we're, we're in the driver's seat right now and uh, there's something really special that's going to happen soon under the supervision of museum staff, but we'll keep that for later. So first of all, let's go over what's here. Uh, like with all your other vehicles, you've got the main console in front of the driver. You've got all the basic stuff, speed, engine temperature, uh, your light controls. An interesting thing to note here is that because there are two engines on the chaffee, each one has its own tachometer and engine temperature gauge on the front console. Steering on the chaffee is accomplished by using two tillers, one located on each side of the driver. When a tiller is pulled back, it breaks the track that it's in control of and either slows down that track or stops it completely, allowing the tank to either turn around that side or stop completely when both tillers are pulled. Also to the right of the driver are two levers. The big one controls the transfer case and the small one controls the transmission. Behind the driver is a circuit breaker for the wipers and also an emergency ignition switch. Uh, note that it is in neutral right now because of what we're about to do. So, uh, like I said, the museum staff is watching us right now. He, the guy who maintains this tank, is right over on top of me right now. So, uh, here's a little demo. Uh, so, first of all, there's two ignition switches. So, if you can just uh, come look at the center console. So, there's two ignition switches here for both engines. So, this one's for the right engine. This one's for the left engine. This one. And then... This will turn on the engine. Right, so uh, off to the next uh, position now, we'll turn off the engines by just turning the ignition. Okay, so now we've climbed down from the turret into the seat beside the driver's seat, the co-driver's seat. So, in the act, in an uh, active military M24, you would have had a front bow gun mounted over here. Unfortunately, uh, in the demilitarizing process, that was removed. So now we only have a barrel to show you what it would have looked like from the outside. Now, the co-driver's main job was to, well, co-drive the tank. He would be able to control the front bow machine gun. But most importantly, he had a duplicate set of controls. So I've got two tillers at the front on both sides of me to control uh, the steering, as well as a gas pedal. That way, if something ever happened to the driver, the co-driver would be able to take over duties and hopefully get the tank to a safe area. Okay, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching, and most importantly, thanks to the Ontario Regiment Museum for supporting all our videos. If you guys have time you, and you're in Canada, you should definitely go visit them. They're located in Oshawa, Ontario. and maybe think about giving them a donation because they help us out a lot. That's about it. Time to head out before the Germans get here.